Teaching English in Vietnam has been kind of the biggest thing to do in the last three decades. This has allowed us as non-Vietnamese citizens to live in Vietnam, travel all over Southeast Asia, and allowing us to make Vietnam part of our long-term life, including the idea of retirement. However, English has been canceled since the beginning of 2024. We are now in the summertime where schools are having a hard time keeping students in and there is a massive surplus of teachers looking for jobs right now. So what happens when the new school year starts? Parents are going to be obligated to pay the new year's tuition fees for schools and this is going to be a different situation for all of these Vietnamese parents. And this is turning English into the idea that it's more of an elective and because the rule was taken out to remove English altogether. I don't see many kids and parents agree to the elective classes that cost more than a standard class would. Plus, universities at Saigon, Phan Thiet, and Dala have already created university programs that don't even require English anymore, and they're being rolled out starting next month. If you're already a teacher, this means you're going to have a very hard time keeping your job. For you guys that are coming out here to find a job, you're going to be kind of against two separate walls. One other new teachers looking for jobs, which is a surplus right now. And two, you're gonna be competing with experienced teachers that might have been released from the prior job. Regardless of what position you're in, there is still hope and there is still a light at the end of the tunnel where you can get a job or keep your job. It's not completely over with, so don't take it that way. Let me share with you some hacks, some tricks that will get you in the door of teaching English abroad in Vietnam. And if you are a teacher already, how you can keep that job for sure. Now, the first thing you have to do is stop assuming you're doing okay. If you already have a teaching job, thinking that you're the best and you're in the best spot possible is not gonna get you anywhere. You have to accept feedback. You have to sit down and start evaluating yourself as a teacher. Are you good enough? Are you what the school wants? Because at the end of the day, if they don't want you, the parents don't like you, and the students hate being around you, it's gonna be a hard spot to stay. And even though English in Vietnam is a pay to win kind of a situation, you still have to bring value. And we can't lower the standard and go in there thinking I can just drink a lot and kind of barely show up and look half drunk all the time. That's not gonna work anymore. So having a strong CV with your pretty face on the top of that CV, showing skills that are relevant to that school and teaching English are more important than ever. You can't be get by Googling some random lesson plan, putting your name on it and printing it. This doesn't work anymore. And I see so many people doing it and the schools look at it and they know exactly where it came from. Our jobs as teachers, is of course to teach some English, but most of all, it's to entertain. So you have to make sure you're still doing it. You have to reevaluate yourself, record your classes and rewatch them, whatever it takes. We are essentially just actors. So have a good lesson plan, have activities, have games that work. As long as the kids are happy, the parents are happy. If the parents are happy, they're paying the schools. The schools are happy, you're keeping your job. And I want to be clear, this doesn't mean just go into a classroom and just start playing stupid games. We want to teach them English. If they can learn one or two new things every class, you're doing awesome, right? Now, when it comes to the legal stuff in Vietnam, what's required? Has any of that changed? And the answer is really no. You still need to have a four-year bachelor's degree. I know a lot of guys have been in the South, worked without a degree. I've seen the comments where people are like, well, I know this one school that you can get away with it. You can't get away with it past a few months. The government will find out. They will go after the school, not you. They will go after that school. The school will not lose their livelihood over you. They don't care about you. They want you to make that money. And if you're going to cause them to lose their business, you're going. So get that out of your mind. If you don't have a degree, you're not going to find a job in Vietnam as an English teacher. Second, you need to have a TEFL. This has never not been a thing is having a TEFL. Now, I'm going to burn a lot of bridges today with people that I personally know in Saigon that run TEFL English centers where they train Western people. This is going to get me some enemies and I might even see them in the comments and I apologize, but at this point, we just got to be real. So when it comes to your TEFL, going to Vietnam or going to your home country, go to these light classes, I don't recommend them anymore. There's no point. You're paying them to have the opportunity to teach a live Vietnamese class. You're paying them to have the opportunity to meet other Western teachers flying to Vietnam to learn the same skill you're learning. And that's going to cost you. But you know what doesn't cost you is getting your first job, making some friends at the school because there's already going to be Western people there, right? 
making friends with the Vietnamese staff, learning about the area itself, having yourself injected into the community, going out with some new Vietnamese friends, going out with the other expats that are in the community. And you could do all of this, save thousands of dollars and get paid to do it. So what is the solution if you do need a TEFL? Check the link below. Get your TEFL done online. It takes you over the weekend, costs a couple hundred dollars, and it never expires. Any skills you need to learn, you can learn them on YouTube. You can learn them live in Vietnam. Remember, the standard for teaching in Vietnam is not very high. You need to be an entertainer. You need to be an actor or an actress. That's really what it comes down to. Now, once you get all this stuff together, you have your teacher package together, what happens next? You gotta find a job, right? And when it comes to getting a job in Vietnam, that's really never changed. The process is about the same. You get from step one, which is pretty much emails and phone call communication. Sometimes it's a Skype call or something like that. And they kind of do like a soft interview. They make sure you can speak English. They make sure you're qualified for the job. Round two is when you do an actual demo class. This is where they'll call you into the school or you do this online, depending if you're in Vietnam or not. And you will teach a bunch of staff members like their English class or some schools will have you teach a live class for half the normal time. And the whole point of this is to prove that you can actually teach English. And round three is pretty straightforward. You negotiate your salary, you assign some contracts, you can get your schedule, life is all over. But what about you guys out here that are already teachers? Because you're dealing with the competition of new teachers as well as current teachers trying to get a new job or re-secure a new job as they were just laid off. Now the first part's gonna sound kinda weird. It's not about what you know, it's about who likes you. And it's that simple. So when it comes to the school you're working at, Start talking with the staff, start bringing them fruit, start bringing them like cheap candies. You don't gotta spend a lot of money on this. The whole idea is you're kind of buying their favorites because Vietnamese love this simple type of stuff and it creates a relationship with them that where they do like you. You don't wanna be that guy that they talk about like, who's that David guy? They're like, I don't know, he never talks to anybody. I don't know what he's doing. No, we gotta get rid of some teachers. Well, I like Donnie, even though Donnie's a crappy teacher, they're gonna get rid of the David that's a better teacher because he's not communicating. He's not the fun guy. And you also want to do it with the students. When you're walking into your school, if you see students you know, make it know that you're talking with them. Like sit there like, hey, how you doing, little Johnny? You know, stuff like that. If you see parents waving them too, if you see the kids that they recognize, anything that will make you seem like the cool guy to be around. You have to build these relationships. And I'm not telling you to go take them out of town and take them to the bar and stuff like that. Nothing like that at all. This is purely at the office. Now the next one is more of a legal thing. Part of the process is you have to have a work permit. A lot of teachers, native and non, typically get a work permit and stop there. They'll do the visa runs every 12 months. Get a TRC. A TRC is a temporary residence card. This does two things. One, you no longer have to do visa runs. You're visa exempt. And number two is if a school decides to remove you and all you have is a work permit, it's a phone call. It's a very fast process for the school to do. So if they do terminate you, they can cancel your work permit within 24 hours. If you have a residence card, it actually costs the school money to cancel the card prematurely. And finally, at the beginning of this video, I talked about feedback, reviewing yourself. Start looking at what other teachers do and start adapting what really works. And if you find flaws in your own teaching, get rid of them. If you start noticing that your classes are getting out of control more times than none and your TAs are stressed all the time, start putting more activities and start fixing this. You need to be the perfect, most liked, happy teacher. This will allow you to keep your job even when Vietnam starts cutting all these teachers because mark my words, and I've said this many times, over half these English teachers will be cut when this summer is over because parents are going to realize English is no longer required. Universities will no longer require it for a lot of their programs and students that have no intent of leaving Vietnam will not take English and they will not put themselves under that exam of passing an English exam, paying thousands of dollars every month for an English center that they don't need. It's been a fun ride, Vietnam. It really has. For 32 years, we've been able to come to Vietnam pretty much semi-retired. If you look at old videos, people talking about retirement, they all just had fake business visas. Nope, there is no retirement in Vietnam. It is impossible. I see YouTube lawyers on here talking about, you can retire in Vietnam. You watch the video and 80% through the video, they start telling you, well, you have to get married or you have to get a job to stay out here long-term, but you can't legally retire or you can open a business. Do not open a business in Vietnam as a foreigner. It is excessively demanding financially and mentally. Just don't do it. Just be a teacher. You'll actually make more money that way. So I hope that answers the questions on what's going on in Vietnam teaching, how you can secure your job, or if you're coming out here to find a job, how you can at least be above the ranks to qualify for these jobs that are becoming very scarce. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching. I will see you.